Hello YouTube, this is Keith from Keith's Aquarium. I'm back at part two of the water change. Uh, check out part one once I get it posted. I'll have part one and part two of uh, just a water change, just a kind of a quick down and dirty thing about water changes. I'm still doing the uh, bucket brigade. I haven't got me a python and uh, I look forward to doing that. I'm going to move soon over to a another house. I'm going to get a 125 hopefully and um, hopefully get a, a python and uh, be able to do water changes a lot more quickly, a lot less messy and uh, anyways but I'm still doing the uh, the old bucket brigade. I go to the bathroom, take the shower head off of the, uh, the uh, shower and run it in this uh, big old plastic 15 gallon barrel that I have here and uh, don't forget the dechlor I've heard of horrible stories about people not putting their dechlorinator in oh there's a bug in there what the hey there's a bug in the dechlorinator been using it outside in the pond and I guess that's probably how I got a bug in the dechlorinator. But no big deal. It's a little fertilizer for the plants. But uh, anyways, always put a little dechlorinator in there. You can also put your dechlorinator in the water and then put your regular tap water in. But uh, I do that sometimes, but usually I put it in here. It seems like it's just a little more safer to go ahead and put it in the water before you put it over into the tank. But if you're if you're using a python, your water comes straight from your tap into your tank. Just be sure you put your dechlorinator in, and it got to do it within like as the new water is going in, the dechlorinator goes in. Because I think that dechlorinator neutralizes within a few minutes or 10 or 15 minutes after you put it in. So, what I do is just pour me some buckets. I got a three gallon, it's about three gallon tub or tote here that I fill up. And then just lift over in here. And I've already filled this tank up most of the way. I didn't want to bore you with uh, bucket by bucket by bucket over and over again. But I went through and pulled all the little clippings out as best I could. And uh, just need to make sure the water is relatively close, the same temperature, close enough to tell with your hands is good enough. And I think human touch can get within one to two degrees of. Uh, you know, uh, the temperature range. Still got a little bit of floaties in there, but most of that floaty stuff is the duckweed. And I want to try to keep some of that, but it's really starting to take over. So, um, just want to go through and do the last little bit of clipping and, uh, Kind of just prune the plants up a little bit. Get the plants kind of in a good position from all that water I was pouring in there. It's kind of got the plants in an awkward position. The water level has been low too for some time. Just kind of groom things up a little bit here and there. Got all these jungle vow here. See all these uh, jungle vows growing in, growing out front, and uh, they're sprouting. And I don't want to stop them, but they're kind of covering up my baby tears, which I'm trying to get going, and so. Check out the uh, clown loach. 
And I got some rummy nose tetras there. I love those guys. Sag is awesome. And I have the uh, Java Fern here, which is just exploding. It's got that CO2 coming out of that power head right there with that little net screen on there to keep it from blowing too hard. Got the Ludwigia Rippins, which is just bright red. Check it out. It is popping. More Ludwigia Rippins, bright red. It's killer. And all my little sprigs of Anubias everywhere. This is the mother plant right here. But I got some Anubias all over. See, here's another one right here. That, was, that grew straight from a straight rhizome. There was nothing on that. Grew it out of a rhizome. And if you look back in the back corner, that's actually a, a sword there. So anyways, if you like what I'm doing, you like my videos, comment, subscribe. Thanks. Bye-bye.